So there's this passage of scripture in the Bible where Jesus is talking to Peter and he's like, Get behind me, Satan. You're a hindrance to me for your setting your mind on the things of man and not on the things of God. I want to talk to you about that passage of scripture for a minute today and how it applies to you why this passage of scripture is of extreme importance to you playing, creating, manifesting, attracting in this beautiful world. You see, the thing like God is straight fire, man. Yeah, that's right. I don't know that there's anything sexier than when someone taps into their divine intuition and begins thinking like God. And the passage that I just talked about is from Matthew 16. Man, Jesus goes straight savage on Peter, bro. He's like... It's going savage on him for thinking like with this like old potato mindset, you know, like this limited mindset. And the worst part about the limited mindset of man, the devil, the ego, use whatever word, insert whatever word makes you happy or makes you comfortable. The worst part about this limited mindset is that it doesn't just limit the thinker. But it's like a low-key trap for everyone else in your life. This is why Jesus said, you're a hindrance to me, Peter. Which could be better translated like you're a snare or a trap. So if you want to live, and I know you do, you're here right now. And because you're here right now, I know you want to live like a lit life. Then you must let go of the limited mindset that you've identified as. Not in, but as. How many times have we been Satan unintentionally being a snare or a trap to others, to our friends, to our family, to our lovers, to our acquaintances, to our co-workers because of a conditioned mindset? I mean, it's probably been too many times to count. How many times have we looked at our kids and been like, well, that's too much money or you know, we're never going to have that or we're never going to be rich or we're just going to have to work hard forever. Like limited mindset. And we're a snare to our children, stifling their creativity. We're a snare to the world around us. Instead of encouraging belief and creativity and imagination, we're like stifling their creativity. You know, the crazy thing is that this limited mindset is actually the norm in the world we're living in. But I'm here to change this. You see, the minuscule lives we've built for ourselves and identified in are keeping us from reaching for the fucking stars, man. We must clip this imprisoned way of thinking. But I'm going to warn you right now. This comes with a warning. Everyone is going to think you're crazy at first. I mean, my actual family, my uh, if, you're, and if you're watching this, you know it's true. My family thought for probably since 2010, for a good eight years, maybe they still think I am, but for a minute, they thought I lost my mind. My own wife talks about how, man, Silas has gone crazy. He's lost his ever-loving mind. We don't know what to think. He's changing so rapidly, so quickly. He's a completely different person. He's high as a kite all the time. He can barely stand up. He's pissing his pants on the street. What is going on? You see, everyone's going to think you're crazy at first. And while my family admittedly thought I was crazy, I am admittedly out of my mind. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is a good thing because every powerful like inner move of God, any, any created thing, you have to be out of your mind. You have to believe something and it's going to appear like you're out of your mind to the world. But in actuality, what you are is you're out of that beta mind and you're in theta, you're in delta, you're in gamma, and in high ranges of alpha, this creative state of God-likeness. Man, it's a powerful place to fucking live, bro. <laughs> and so I'm still out of my mind today. The word in, for out of your mind in the Greek is ecstasis. <laughs> Thus I created ecstasis institute. An institute all about being out of your mind. And I still teach that today at, in the Life Artistry Institute. I'm still teaching about being out of your mind. And some of the ways that we can enter into this state of being out of our mind is through meditation. But I'm going to tell you right now, like every 
place where we've really seen a powerful move, something really supernatural take place. It came from someone that was out of his mind. I mean, even Jesus himself, his family came to him and they literally said, they went out, the Bible literally says they went out to seize him for they were saying he's out of his mind. They were going to try to put him like in, in, the, in their day's idea of a mental institution, dude. Like they were, they thought he had lost his ever loving mind. That's what they said about Jesus. It's what they say about me. So I promise, if you start living with ultra positivity and you start declaring things and believing things that are true, even though they're not manifest yet, people are going to think you've lost your mind. And when you start tapping into those high ranges of alpha, theta, delta, and even gamma brainwaves, I mean, then they're really going to think you've lost your mind because you're not coming across as rational because you're not functioning with fight or flight. This is why they think you lost your mind because you're not supposed to be this happy all the time. You're not supposed to be enjoying your life like this. You're not supposed to be resting so much. You're supposed to be working hard. <laughs> and so if they said it about Jesus and they said it about me, I promise they're going to say it about you too. Doesn't take a lot these days, does it? But I want you to ask yourself, do you want to live like the depressed, the limited, and the miserable? Or... Like the happy, the hyped, and the infinite. Do you want to live a finite, temporal, limited existence or an infinite existence? And of course you want to live an infinite existence. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you believe, you will receive. The recondition of your subconscious mind is what is absolutely imperative to begin to tap into the freedom that exist in that creative possibility. You see, 95% of your thought life is happening without your conscious awareness. That's right, 5%, your, oh, 5% they say between 2 and 5% of your thought life is conscious. The other 95 to 98% isn't conscious at all. This is where most of the self-sabotaging doubt comes from. And so, it's one thing for me to tell you this, and it's one thing for you to go, yeah, that's probably true. It's a whole other thing for you to begin to apply it. And so I break this down metaphysically, scientifically, and scripturally for you in an upcoming course called the Metaphysical Mindfulness Course. I'm going to drop the link below. Click on that link and get started today. If you click on that link, you are going to find that there is a discount, and it's just for a few days. So click on that link and get your discount. The normal price is only 420 bucks, man. That's 12 weeks, dude. You're not going to be able to beat that, and you're going to ultimately manifest and create so much that's going to blow your fucking mind. So some of the things that you're going to learn is how to choose happy, how to heal your own body, how to begin activating your latent DNA, and even how to change your DNA, and so, so, so much more, dude. So, links below. Final note, final word. Stop being Satan. Stop being a deceiver. Stop being a snare sna and a trap to the world around you, to your friends, to your family, to your lovers, to your children, to your acquaintances and coworkers, and start being Christ. Start just being that I am to them. I love you. You are amazing. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.